I was rummaging through a bargain bin like the raccoon I am when I found a treat. It was a boxless copy of Lollipop Chainsaw nestled in between copies of Devil May Cry and Guitar Hero. It reminded me that I missed the bus to San Romero nearly 9 years ago, which was maybe a good thing, and that it was very weird I hadn't tried the game up until this point. I remember 2012 being particularly stacked for me game-wise, so it quietly took a seat in the back for me. Having finished it twice, I feel as if I ended up with something sweeter than candy on a stick, with the flavor that only the mad lads at Grasshopper Manufacture could cook up. Having experienced the fucking nightmare that was high school, there were days that truly felt like the end of the world. Instead of bombing calculus, however, our protagonist Juliet Starling has to deal with something on a greater apocalyptic scale. She arrives at school on the morning of her 18th birthday to find her friends and teachers turned into shambling corpses. So instead of turning tail and running, Juliet applies her years of training and arms herself with her bedazzled chainsaw. Literally cutting class and making her way to the courtyard, she finds out that it's already too late for her boyfriend Nick. Juliet then chops his head off his infected body, leaving him a disembodied talking head. The pair then meet up with Juliet's sensei Morikawa, who tells them that the entrance of the Rotten World, which is this game's version of hell, was bonked open by someone, causing the outbreak. We then find out it was this society liver, and he intends on spreading the plague to the rest of the world. Juliet and Nick must then defeat Swan and his goons in order to restore balance to the realms. I find the prologue sets the tone of Lollipop Chainsaw fantastically. It establishes itself as a delightfully mean black comedy right away, with Juliet treating this as more of an inconvenience instead of a horrible tragedy. He crashed over by the school and is probably dead! Wow, now is the perfect time to do some shopping! The plot itself isn't the most complex, and absolutely doesn't take itself seriously. As a result, we get a game that stays relatively lighthearted, and most of all, fun is all hell to play through. According to Goichi Suda, Lollipop Chainsaw's creative director, the idea of the game came to him while he was sitting on the toilet. <sighs> he wanted to make a fun zombie game that was based on popular culture, featuring a cheerleader with a chainsaw. This game would also be based on American high school films, hence the setting. These movies usually feature a central conflict, with that conflict turning everything upside down. However, instead of not having a date to prom, Suda wanted this game's element of panic to be zombies. I believe that these decisions were a good idea moving forward. The zombie craze was still in full swing in 2012, and Lollipop Chainsaw needed its own identity to stand out. Together with the team at Grasshopper, and even James Gunn, Suda would deliver on the promise of making a game with deep ties to pop culture. It wears a lot of its influences on its sleeve, really. Julia is a not-so-subtle nod to Buffy Summers with the game borrowing elements from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. There's sneaky references to movies like Predator, Monty Python, and not so sneakily, Evil Dead. Hell, the school's name is even San Romero! Although oddly enough, the game's biggest source of inspiration comes from Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. The game is a big allusion to the tragedy, with some creative liberties taken. Additionally, according to the Lollipop Chainsaw Wiki, Nick's name in early development was Romeo as well. In hindsight, this makes sense, as the two live in very different worlds and are torn apart due to forces out of their control. So Juliet's favorite quote is from Shakespeare itself. On her wiki page it reads, But soft, what light through yonder window breaks? It is east, and Juliet is the sun. Wait, Leonardo DiCaprio? Lastly, the game's soundtrack helps shape its identity as well. Akira Yamaoka and Jimmy Urin of MSI fame were collaborating together for it, and Yamaoka states that he drew inspiration from 80s music. Urin adds that- fuck? His name's really Urin? Urin adds- <laughs> Sorry. Urin adds that newer bands and flavors such as Skrillex and Dragon Force were added, and I think those inclusions give the soundtrack an insane amount of variety. Having done my second playthrough in silence to record footage, I can't help but feel like the music is one of the largest parts of its identity. It does have its own original songs, which are great, but a lot of the sections are memorable due to the use of its licensed tracks. Unfortunately, that makes this game streaming poison, but them's the breaks. I adored looking into this game's influences because I seriously got the impression that Lollipop Chainsaw was a melting pot of everything it borrowed from. There's so many moving parts here, but the game borrows them and makes it its own.
The gameplay in Lollipop Chainsaw is simple with some depth to it. For light attacks, Julia uses her pom-poms. These are fast but weak, and they soften up zombies and make them groggy. Juliet's chainsaw is used for her heavy attacks, and these are much slower, but much more powerful. When zombies are groggy from pom-pom strikes, Juliet can then pop their heads with one swipe of her chainsaw. In that sense, the gameplay feels very reminiscent of No More Heroes. You soften them up, then remove the head. There's no block button, oddly enough, but there is an acrobatic dodge that lets you evade threats comfortably. Julia can even use this dodge to leapfrog over her enemies like a cheerleader would. Nick just isn't for decoration, however, as you can use him in battle as well. Using an item called a Nick Ticket, you can roll the Nick Gotcha to use a super useful move. A lot of these saved me on very hard, but the most useful one is the ability to revive Juliet if she falls during battle. Additionally, Juliet will get upgrades to her chainsaw the more you progress through the story. With all these tools at your disposal, you can make quick work of The Walking Dead. Taking out more than three zombies in a row grants you bonuses through a mechanic called Sparkle Hunting. Sparkle Hunting allows you to gain more of the in-game currency that can be cashed in at the game shop, the first of these being zombie medals that can be exchanged for new moves, passive upgrades, and items. The second are platinum medals that can be traded in for things such as concept art, BGM, and COSMETICS BABY! There are a ton of unlockable costumes in this game, and because this game uses in-game cutscenes, Juliet will be wearing them in cutscenes as well. Levels will have you taking out zombies, saving your classmates, doing fun minigames, and then facing off against a quirky boss. These include Jimmy Urin from MSI, T-Pain in a diaper, and Chainsaw Blaster. Jokes aside, I feel like this upgrade rarely worked when I tried to use it. I was actively fighting the game trying to get it to work. I tried it on three different controllers, toggled manual aim on and off, and it would still aim and stop aiming. It's frustrating because you need this ability for many parts of the game after you get it. My tangent aside, I never felt like the gameplay for Lollipop Chainsaw got stale. Performance and screen tearing was an issue, but it never ruined my experience. Except for you, Chainsaw Blaster. Man, I love this game more than it loves using Comic Sans. Speaking of comics though, one thing I really love is Lollipop Chainsaw's comic book aesthetic. You can see this from the title screen and beyond, seeping into the UI and the cutscenes. Being a big fan of cosmetics, I also love this game's wide variety of costumes. These range from High School of the Dead to Dead Men Wonderland, although I am insanely upset that a lot of them can't be bought anymore as a handful were pre-order bonuses. However, I think my favorite thing about Lollipop is the game's marketing. For PAX East 2012, instead of a normal booth, the team opted for a different approach. They transformed the school bus into this damn thing. I think it's meant to look similar to the bus Rosalind drives in the farm level? But it's got demos of the game inside. But what's this? Who's that standing next to that dashing fellow? It, is that... Is that Jessica Negri? It is! Grasshopper held a contest in order to find a real-life actress to portray Juliet, and it seems that Jessica Negri was the winner. I think she kills it. Negri would appear in live-action trailers for the game as well, serving as advertisements for fictional Lollipop branded items. Doing my homework for this video led me down a rabbit hole full of goodies, a lot of them being super interesting to look into. I'll link a couple of them in the description doobly doo -ba down below, because uh, those are pretty good. The PAX bus especially, because I feel like that's a little piece of history that I'm glad was documented. All in all, I'm glad I picked up Lollipop Chainsaw on a whim. I ended up having a lot more fun with it than I thought I would, and doing all the research into development and its influences ended up being super fruitful as well. The game isn't without its flaws, as I feel like some of the jokes don't land, and the language used in some bits just isn't cool. I'm also still mad about Chainsaw Blaster. <laughs> Despite this, this lollipop is still tasty. I recommend it to anyone who's a fan of Grasshopper games, as James Gunn says that it's for them. I would love to see this game return in some fashion. I think Lollipop's fun enough to vibe in today's climate, and maybe Grasshopper would be willing to deliver again. Hey, if you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much. Special thanks to Kriminata Art for the piece of Himawari and I as Julia and Nick. It's a super cute piece and I'm honored to have worked with yet another talented artist for this video. If you think I've earned it, please consider liking this video and sharing it with your friends. If you want to hear more of my crazed rambling about video games, drop a sub. I plan on making more videos about games that are near and dear to my heart. Did you play Lollipop Chainsaw? Did Chainsaw Blaster work for you and I'm just smelly and dumb? Let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear from you, dear viewer. But until next time, take care of yourselves, have yourselves a good one, and remember to stay gold. I didn't know you spoke Japanese, Nick! Well, I... I can't speak Japanese, Juliet. I just know that one word. Aw, your simple innocence is one of the most attractive things about you. Uh, yeah.
<laughs> You're like a kitten. A kitten that doesn't speak Japanese. Yeah, okay. <laughs>